All right, so we have a Sega Genesis, or as you were, a Sega Game Gear that I have put new capacitors in. And after I put the new capacitors in, when I apply power, that's what my screen does. So I ordered a new LCD screen from Handheld Legends, um, and it's a part of their clean screen kit that they sell that comes with the circuit card, and you can buy a flex assembly that they, that, uh, Retro 6 puts out, um, but I elected to order just the LCD screen to replace the LCD screen that's in here. And I don't know how to install it. I don't, I didn't see any instructions on how to install it. So that is what we are going to do today. We are going to figure out how to install this screen and replace the existing one that's in here. All right, the board is out. Let's take a look at what's inside the package. I don't know how I'm gonna do this because so when I take a look at this, how does this translate to that? This does not translate to that. Unless I don't need all of those pins or something? I mean, I don't think this is gonna work, man. All right, after doing some research, I've determined that the screen alone will not work. So, I had to order the Retro 6 clean screen board, and it cost $50 to do that. And it comes with the circuit card. This is what the clean screen board looks like. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Comes with some new brackets. Uh, and I also printed off the, the instructions. So, step one is the front shell stump. Cut the long screw stump from the front shell flush with the surface. Then we got to trim the metal cage. And then we have to, so step number three is where I'm going to start removing the old screen. I'll, I'll do the other stuff later, but we're going to remove the old screen. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to remove the screen, and then there are quite a few components that we're going to have to remove, and we'll go from there. So let's go ahead and put this here. I've already kind of been playing with this thing. So we will go ahead and maybe put a little flux down. And try to gently remove this from, from the board. Oh, you know what? Before I do that, I better go ahead and remove this tape and the husky hair while I'm at it. So 
So this is the first time I'm doing this. So hopefully it won't be too difficult. And I did not buy the ribbon cables. The uh, Retro 6 makes ribbon cables for this that just basically fall into place and you just dot them up with some solder and you're good to go. But some of the reviews said that the pads came off. Now that could just be user or, you know, idiots like me, you know, not, not knowing how to do things properly. But I figured I'd rather just try it without. So got that tape removed. So let's see if we can get the board off now. Do this gently so that we don't rip any pads off. And that was very simple. Very simple indeed. So let's go ahead, get a Q-tip, get some alcohol, clean this up a little bit. Make it look nice and neat. All right. So, the, so that's that. Next step is to remove the L2 coil CCFL backlight tube, fuse 1, fuse 2, R29, or R56, R30, or R57. And then finally make sure to cut the 34 volt wire. So I need to cut, I need to cut that wire which is that wire so we'll go ahead and do that now and then we need to remove CCFL backlight tube I guess this is the tube and it has to come out All right, that side's out. And that side's out. I need to remove the L2 coil. And the L2 coil is this coil right here. So we need to go ahead and remove that. So it's those two points right there. So let's go ahead put some solder on there and we'll flip it over. That bad boy was getting hot. So that's the L2 coil. I guess. And we'll put this somewhere. We'll put that in there. So the next thing 
is fuse one, fuse two, or fuse one and fuse two. Fuse one. Oh, I see. Those are the two fuses right here. Okay. So, so the fuses that I have to remove are located here and here. So, see if we can bend these down a little bit. See if we can't just get them to come right on out like that. Do the same thing for the other side. Bend it down a little bit. Slide my tweezers in there. That one's out. Now, we can just grab it from the bottom and pull it right out. Wouldn't it be something if the fuse was blown? That would be, that would not be okay. Doesn't spend a hundred bucks just to, so this poor thing doesn't go in the trash. All right, so R29 and R30. All right, so mine's R56, so it must be those two. It must be those two, because that's R56, and I think that says R57 right there. Let's, uh, let me put it under the microscope to verify the, yeah, so those two. So, uh, how do we want to do this? Well, what we can do is take a little solder, pluck one right off, and then we can take and pluck this other one right off, and that one's off. There you go. It's removed. What's next? Uh, finally, make sure to cut the 34 volt wire, which we already did. We already cut the 34 volt wire. Really? That was all the components we had to remove? All right, so board and screen mounting. Slide the brackets over the LCD screen and push it over the four holes on the original metal bracket cover. So this goes on here like so. like that. This one is like that. So according to the picture, if we try to get these in the same same deal, it should look something like this, right? Yeah. That looks uh We'll say that looks right. All right, so then it says connect the LCD screen uh, by lifting up the plastic tab on the clean screen, inserting the ribbon cable in fully, then pulling or then pushing back down the plastic tab. So let's uh, let's go ahead and do that. Assumptions I'm making here is it's gonna gonna sit like that, and then the clean screen board. Got to remove these capacitors out of the way for a minute. Dude, it's been so long since I took this apart, I don't remember which screws are which. Is it these? Hmm.
we got one lined up, so we'll go ahead and uh, try to get it started. Kind of hold it in place a little bit. And we'll grab another. Do the opposite corner. Hold that screw there. Oh, I'm not showing you what I'm doing here. Then we'll get that lined up. And then we'll go ahead and screw that screw in like so. And then we'll grab another screw. And we will try to get it started. Hopefully this lines up with the plastic mount on the other side. It feels like it did. And then last, but certainly not least, is this screw right here. Alright, so we'll go ahead and tighten all of these up. in there nice and solid. Still got the piece of plastic covering over it so we don't damage it. And the last thing this is going to be difficult man. This cable is not long enough and it's slightly All right, so I finally got the uh, screen on. I ended up having to take it back off. And then I plugged in the ribbon cable. And then I put it all back together. So I think that's the easiest way to, to get it on there. So the next step we have to work on is actually running our wires. And if you look, I printed off the instructions. So this tells you what you need to do. So the pin two is gonna go to the left edge of C37 as you're looking uh, let me see. As you're looking at it like this, right? So the so this is C37 over here. So you're going to go to the left side of that. So basically, we just need to run wires uh, wherever it tells us to do so. So that's what we're going to be working on, and we're going to try to do it as neatly as possible. So I kind of pulled this ribbon cable out to try and uh, see the best way to do this um, and I'm not sure I know to be honest but we are going to give it we are going to give it a good try and make it look as neat as we possibly can so let's strip some wire I really need to buy some better wire cutters alright let's go ahead and flux those up let's break out the soldering iron put some solder on the tip I don't know if the best way to do this is to connect all of these and then fight to get the, the cables where they need to go. I'm not sure. But I guess we'll do it and see. Maybe if I ever do this again, at least I'll know. So let's go ahead and put some solder on these pads. Green. And 
and keep in mind that uh, the color is absolutely irrelevant to me. That one didn't go on there. And lastly, the ground wire. So all those look nice. So now the next step is the green wire. So let's put some flux on C37. Let's put a dab of solder on C37 on the left side. It's going on the left side. I don't know if y'all could see that or not, but and then we're going to take our wire. Yeah, and I think that green wire is on there. And so then the next wire is the yellow wire. Where does it go? So that wire is going to go to the right edge of C38. So C38 is located right here. All right, so let's, uh, let's put a dab of flux there. We'll put some solder on the right side of C38 just like so and then we need to figure out how long this wire needs to be Let's lift up this capacitor a little bit get our green wire there like so Pull this back a little bit. And so then this is just going to slide right across like that. So let's go ahead and cut it. About right here. Let's go ahead and strip it. If I can without tearing anything up. Yep, it's stripped. Let's take our that's on there. And the next one is our uh, wheel pins. So it doesn't say which one is positive or negative, but I know on the board positive is positive is the first one. Let me get a Q-tip and clean that up a little bit. Yeah, so positives on top, so that, that orange wire right there is the positive, and the red wire is negative. So I'm going to just assume since they list it positive first and then negative, then that means that this pin, let's see if I can get it without making it blurry. That pin's going to be positive, and that pin's going to be negative. Assumptions. Not sure if that's true or not, but we will figure it out. So let's go ahead and strip these back a little bit.
So yeah, Ret Retro Six sells the. Uh, they sell the. Um, they make a, a wire free, right? They have a ribbon cable, and all you gotta do is plop it down in there. Plop, plop, plop. Drop some solder, and you're and you're good to go. But since you know, I do this for fun. Um, I'm already gonna lose money, you know, just in ordering the screen and the and the uh, and the clean screen board. I'm already gonna lose money when I go to sell this. So it's not like uh, so. I figured if I could save ten dollars to minimize the amount that I'm gonna take a loss, I will. Because I just like I said, it's better than this thing being thrown away. You know, it's just better to. If you can fix it, fix it. If you know, I'll take a little bit of a loss. I can I can afford to do that. Um, but at the end, some nerd somewhere will have a nice a nice uh, nice Sega Game Gear that they can do whatever. Oh Lord, I think I bridged those pins. They're unbridged. Look at that. Alright, I think that's alright. Now let's take the red one. Do the same thing. But the red one's going to go right next to it. So the next one is 5 volts, which is my brown wire here. And that goes to the left side of L2, which is what we took off earlier. So L2 is right there. Let me, let me point to it. L2 is, the left side of L2 is right here. So let's go ahead and in that hole up a little bit. Now, I think we'll run this brown wire underneath all of the rest of these. slack on there. And we'll take our matter of fact let's uh put a little bit more flux down. I think that's on there nicely and then the last one is ground and it says to the right of C72 and C72 is located right here that C72 right there so same thing we're gonna go underneath I think try to fish it underneath the ribbon cable here Like so. We'll leave again a little extra slack on there. So let's go to what did it say? It's always said the left, no, the right side of C72. So um, so C72 is located here. We're going to go to the right side of that. 
a blob of solder on there like so so I think that that is nice so let's let's take a gander up close And I think that it, it looks looks all right, you know what I'm saying? There you go. So that side's done. Now we just need to do the other side. All right, so I don't know how much I recorded earlier. I don't know if the thing just randomly cut off, but um, essentially what I'm doing is I'm identifying all of the spots on the board that I need to uh, run wires to. And since this is more complicated, I'm kind of, I can't really do it like I did the other side over here. Uh, but the first wire we have to connect is from R23 to T10 um, and then we're going to be connecting one to the bottom of C34 we're going to be connecting one to FB1 we're going to be connecting one to T2 um, we are going to be connecting wires to the top of these four resistors located right here so yeah so that's what we're going to be doing so I'm about to run the first wire We're going to go ahead and put it right here. And then we'll come switch hands. All right, I think that's on there nicely. And then I have to run wires to the tops of these four resistors right here. So let's get a little solder on the soldering iron. I may have to get under the microscope to do this. I don't know if I'll be able to see. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to get under the microscope. Hopefully, I can. Maybe I can record with that. All right, so I think, uh, so now I need to flip this over like so, so that it comes up here and connects to the pads that it's supposed to. So let's, uh, let's cut it right about there. We'll leave that for now. Uh, so the next thing, the hard one's done. We need to go to, what is the next one on the board? SMS, it looks like. It's SMS, C-Sync, P-Clock. All right, so SMS. SMS is going to go to the top of R23. Let me go ahead and uh, tend these these pads. I might just start soldering these wires down. We're going to go SMS top of R23. So let's uh, grab our tweezers.
it on there just like that. It's nice and sturdy. And then the next one is C sync is going to go to T2. And T2 is located right here. Just put some solder on that. Alright, so let's get us a piece of wire for that. So that's on there, so let's fold it around. Where is it going? To the top of T2, right? Yeah. T2 is right there. So let's uh let's cut and strip. Alright, that looks nice. So the next one is P clock to FB1. Let's grab another wire and then we're going to go to the P clock. Like so. And we're going to run it around to FB1. Locate it right here. And that one's connected. Now, I'm going to go ahead and try to connect these. I guess we'll try to do it from bottom to top. I wish I could do this so I, my big hand ain't in the way. There's one down. There's two down. Three down. Don't tell me this wire is not long enough. I will be furious. There we go. I planned it that way, you know what I'm saying? There we go, beautiful. There are a bunch of loose wires flapping around. It's all nice and nice and neat. Now I just need one, the one last wire, and that is on the bottom of R34, or C34 as you were. Oh my gosh, I think I just, well, let's see if we can, uh, I may have to use the microscope again. sure that is the last wire so if we did everything correctly this should not catch fire when we plug it in matter of fact let me uh, I'm gonna put this thing back together to test so when I've got it back together I'll be back you know what there are two other wires I have to run I forgot about those. And those are the wires on the back that I'm going to have to use the microscope for.
All right, let's put this thing back together. Well, enough to enough to test it anyhow. Hopefully, hopefully the problem was in fact the screen and not something else, or else I just wasted a whole bunch of time. So let's um, let's put some batteries in it. I don't see anything. All right, after uh, troubleshooting for quite a while, I finally figured out that um, the contrast wheel was turned all the way down. And when I cut it on, oh, let me put some batteries in it. When I turn it on, look what you get. That's beautiful, man. That is absolutely beautiful. So that is one fixed. It's pretty damn cool, man. So anyhow, that's how you install the Retro 6 clean screen without actually buying the ribbon cable. But, you know, if you have the extra money to spend, I would recommend getting that. But again, I'm going to take a loss on this as it is, um, so I didn't mind. I didn't mind doing the extra wiring, but anyhow, hopefully this will help you. Uh, it's it's really simple. It's, they, you know, and that's the thing about Retro 6. They make good products, and they make really good instructions, and then you can go on their Discord, you can ask questions, and they're very helpful. So anyways, thanks for watching.